Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jason from Straight Edge Knives. Hey, coming at you today with a very cool video. I think it's going to be cool anyway, because uh, I'm pretty excited about this, but uh, it's an unboxing video. Got this in the mail today. Uh, it's unopened. I know it's in here to some degree, um, and I'm excited to show this to you guys. Uh, it's, it's a pretty exclusive knife, and uh, I think you guys are going to be excited about it as well. So let's get it out, and then I'll tell you what it is. So uh, this came packaged up pretty nicely. Pink paper just fell right there. Is my uh, spec sheet that I have written down for this. Um, like I said, I know what it is, but I have never held one of these or um, seen one in person because this is pretty new. Uh, this is a limited edition knife, so to speak, in the fact that there's only a hundred being made. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, I'll tell you what. They package this box up pretty damn good. In case you're wondering what I'm using to open this up with today, it is the uh, Tops MSF 4. Point, uh, not 4.0, the Tops MSF G, the new Clip Point L Max folder. Um, all right, so there's a, another piece in here. And then we got another box, so there's nothing else in there. Got some bubble wrap. Throw that in there. Ooh, let's close this up so we don't hurt ourselves. All right, guys. I don't know if you see this or not, but that is Sterling F. Buster Cutlery. Um, Cutlery Company, sorry. Sterling F. Buster Cutlery Company. And uh, this is the Sandbar Bowie. Uh, this is designed by... Um, let me get this fixed. This is designed by Sterling Buster, uh, but it's being made by Tops, and this is a limited run of only 100 knives. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Let me get this box open. All right. So there's a, I think all oh, these kind of fell off. These are plastic sheets. I think it was opened up originally um, so Mr. Sterling could uh, put down the serial number. This is going to be number 67 of 100. Uh, he puts that down right here on the little on the end. Um, bust this open. What else is in here? Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Mr. Sterling sent me a Fighting Rooster Knife Collector's uh, like pen and a Fighting Rooster Knife Collector patch. So that's pretty awesome. Now, from what I understand, these aren't going to come with a knife. These are just a couple little extra things he threw in the box for me. Uh, so I greatly appreciate that. Um, but man, let's get into this knife, right? Um, we all know Topps Knives makes a fantastic blade, and uh, from what I understand, uh, Mr. Buster um, has two other knives that Topps has made for him so far. One was uh, like a Smatchet style blade, and the other one was I think called the Fighting Rooster, which was it was it's a cool blade that had like a little swoop on the top. It was like a uh, man, I don't know how to explain it, but it was a cool. Anyway, all of these blades were coming in coffin handled, and this one's no different. And uh, I can tell you right now, this coffin handle looks sick already, man. Look at that. Comes with a nice Kydex sheath with a rotating belt clip with a, you know, the, the steel clip that Tops is known for. Uh, looking like it's got a nice thumb ramp here on the back, but let's get this blade out. I have not seen this. And I've just seen a picture of it. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, guys. This is, uh, oh, this is nice. This has got a, uh, check this out, man. It's like a thin, a thinner version of a Bowie knife. Uh, reading his description about this, uh, he said that this would have been something like um, the boatmen on the Mississippi and things like that would have probably carried like a thinner style Bowie blade uh, up and down the rivers. And uh, I believe that's where the sandbar Bowie name come from, came from. But man, look at this thing is sick. This knife has got a nice, it's, it's light. Like to me, it's light for a big knife. Look at this thing. It's got a nice light weight. This nice, it's got this nice finger guard right here. So you don't worry about it coming up onto the blade. If you were to stab in. Oh man, it's got a nice swedge on the back. I'm going to do a flip around. I'm going to do a top down version. So you guys can get a real good close look at this blade. And I'm also, I also got a few other blades. I'm going to do a size comparison with, but my inertial impressions. This feels really good. It's kind of it's kind of weird. Like the blade's not weird. 
the handle looks like it could be small, but it's not. It. I got to wear XL mechanics gloves and look at it. I got plenty of space on the handle, plenty of room. You can come in here and pommel strike something if you need it to with this. Uh, and just like always, thing as sharp as hell out of the box. This has a nice thinner profile to it. Man, let's get the specs on here. Overall, this thing's coming in at 12.25 inches. Um, the blade length is 7.75 inches. Uh, thickness is 3 uh thick. Blade still is 1095. Uh, differential heat treated from tops, like always, uh, with a rock wheel of 56 to 58. It's got a tungsten Cerakote finish, uh, black G10 with white linen uh, liners. Looks, I mean, it looks really slick, too. Uh, Kydex sheath, and it's designed by Sterling Buster. Um, so kind of reading some of the stuff he's posted, um, uh, he basically has this whole coffin line of series of knives that he's doing um, with these coffin-style handles. Uh, there's been two before this, and those were limited editions as well. Um, you'd have to you have to hunt on the secondary market to find those now. And uh, the same is going to be with this. this. These are limited to 100. Um, and if you're interested in picking one of these up, you can contact Sterling Buster uh, through either Instagram or Facebook on Messenger um, as well. Um, or Arizona Custom Knives um, has a few of these in stock on their website. Um, I'll have links to... Sterling Buster's Instagram and Facebook, as well as Arizona Knives in the details below. So if you're interested in trying to pick one of these up before they're all gone, um, definitely want to hurry up and do that. Um, man, this thing feels really, really good. Um, I really like this. <laughs> I mean, it's got a nice Kydex sheath. Clicks right in there. Not hearing any rattle. And you could pop this off real quick, get to it. It's got two holes down here in the bottom. Put a langer through. This is awesome. You know what? Let's go ahead and uh, pause this real quick. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to flip the camera angle around, get a definitely get a better look at it than me just holding it up. And then I also have a few other Bowie style knives that we can do some size comparisons with. So uh, stand by one second and we'll get to that. All right, guys, we are back. And man, let's, let's get this in here so you guys can get a really good look at this. Check out how cool this thing is. It says Fighting Rooster on there. Number two. 23067. 23 is the year this was made. 067 is the serial number on it. Again, limited edition of 100. Sterling F. Buster Cutlery. There's your tops logo. Look at, man, look at how those white liners pop on this G10. Look at that coffin handle Bowie. I mean, the coffin handle is just phenomenal. Uh, I've actually been trying to make my own coffin handle blade for a while, and I just cannot quite seem to get these dimensions right. And I think you know, Mr. Buster nailed it with this one because, I mean, I can come in here and my finger gets right up into this guard very nicely. Hand comes down. My finger's coming right here on this little swoop, but it's not making my finger protrude. Gives you a nice little extra back here for, like I said, pommel strikes. Feels very good in the hand. It's a nice 316 stick, but these handle scales aren't overly thick either, so it, it has a nice grip where I can get a full grip on it. And I don't feel like my hand's like this. But I'm like this. Very nice. And again, this is a generous, you know, finger guard. So if I had to come in with a reverse grip and stab something, it's my hand's not going to slip down on the, over the blade. Um, there's no jimping on the back. You do have a little bit of a raised area right here. So you had to choke back just a little bit and put your thumb there for some pressure cuts. Or you can't even come right over the top. It ain't going to hurt you. Um, you can see my thumb kind of rest right in there. Feels nice. I am going to be doing a, a, a testing video with this where I'm going to be uh, chopping on some wood, rope, and different things like that. I'll be working on that this weekend so we can see how it performs. But I wanted to get this unboxing and uh, kind of get this going to let you guys see it. So let's bust out some size comparisons here, guys. So first off, we're going to go with the Topps uh, Tex Creek XL. Um, so give you guys a rough idea. These are kind of lined up. Um, obviously, the sandbar bowie is coming in a little bit longer little bit more narrow of a blade as compared to the Tex Creek. Um, the handles are roughly about the same length. Let's flip them over. You can see blade thickness roughly about the same. The handle scales are just a little bit narrower on the uh, Sandbar Boy compared to the uh, Tex Creek XL. So that's a, well, that's a good size comparison right there. 
Um, next up, we'll go with the Longhorn Bowie. So, sorry, uh, tips keep sticking in my cover here. Let's put this up here. So, with the Longhorn Bowie, we go line up the handle scales end to end. You know, make them pretty even here. Um, you're definitely getting a little bit longer of a blade with the Longhorn Bowie. A um, little bit wider blade as well. Um, kind of flip them over. And um, I would say the blade thickness on the Longhorn Bowie is a little bit thicker too. Handle scale wise, they're looking kind of about the same, but I do have the Rocky Mountain tread on my Longhorn, which kind of thins them out a little bit. So that, you know, that's one thing to take into consideration on that. But uh, next up, let's go with the Prather War Bowie. So we'll line these two up together. As you can see, uh, let's scoot this one over just a little bit. There you go. So the Prather War Boy is just a smidge longer. I'd say maybe by an inch here, it looks like. Um, obviously, there's definitely a wider blade, uh, but you do have this swoop here. Um, for this one, has a little bit of a swoop, but not much. And it's not as pronounced as this. Um, handle scale is just a little bit longer. And this is kind of a, I don't know if this is considered a coffin-shaped handle or not, but it is kind of similar in shape, except for the coffin shape on here, you got this little narrower points. Um, blade thickness, uh, you can see here that, to me, it looks like the the war bowie is a little bit thicker than the sandbar bowie, but you can kind of see that there. So there's that size comparison. Let me resheat this before I stab myself. And uh, last one we got here for a size comparison is we got the Operator 7. And now, lengthwise, the reason why I brought this one out is they're almost identical lengthwise. Almost. The, the Operator 7 is obviously just a little bit longer, and the Operator 7 is definitely going to be thicker. But I know a lot of people have an Operator 7, so I feel like this one's a good one to pull out for a size comparison so you can kind of get an idea. Um, but you are definitely got a thick Bowie in the Operator 7 compared to the Sandbar Bowie. Uh, so there's just no getting around that, right? But uh, I just wanted, you know, I try to pull out size comparisons that people, a lot of people have the Operator 7, the War Bowie, maybe the Longhorn, you know, things like that. So I try to pull those out to use them as size comparisons. So it gives you a pretty good idea of at least how long this is and things like that. But I mean, check this thing out, man. It's just, this is a beautiful blade. If you're looking for a longer, like a blade, a longer blade, because this is what, seven and, uh, I can't remember, seven and a quarter inch. Uh, 7.75 inch long blade, but you want something that's a little bit lighter. I think this is going to be a very good choice for you because um, it is a thinner 316th blade stock and it does feel it is a pretty light knife for its size. Um, but man, this thing is beautiful looking. Nice G10. Look at this. Cerakote is awesome. The Cerakote that Tops has been doing on their blades as of late is phenomenal. It holds up fantastic. And uh, Sterling did a fantastic job designing this. This thing feels really good in the hand. I mean, I'm just, I'm just amazed at how the size of this and the weight of it, it just feels very, very good. Um, that's one thing that I don't have in my, in my spec sheet on this is the weight. Um, I kind of had to, uh, I got the spec sheet and uh, for some reason the weight isn't on there. I don't know why, but it just isn't. Um, you do have a little bit of a, Kind of a little bit of a choil right here, so I guess if you had to kind of choke up like this, you could. I uh, would just be, you know, careful not to nick yourself right here. But um, honestly, I don't really feel like you would need to. I mean, you could always push your thumb up here for your press cuts. And as close as this is getting you up in here, I don't think you'd really need to move your finger up here for uh, finer cuts. I think you, I think you'd be perfectly okay doing it down here. But we're gonna find out when I do the testing video. But look at that nice swedge. Coming down to a very acute point. Again, super sharp out of the box. Very clean knife. Very, very nice. Here, get you guys a closer look at the sheath. A nice, uh, was it taco style sheath? There's your spring clip. And this is rotating. You can slowly rotate it so you can, you know, alter the can to the blade if you need to. 
There it is. Check that out. Even with the sheath, it still feels like a light package. I mean, it's just... See down in there? See the balance point on this blade? Feels like it's... I got big old mongoloid fingers, so... It's probably right... Right about where this handle... Right where this tang meets the handle. Kind of do this looking through the camera it makes it a little difficult. Oh, yeah, I'd say it's right about there. It's kind of hard. I got a big old mongoloid finger, so there it is, guys. This is the Sandbar Bowie from Sterling F. Buster um, over at uh, Fight and Rooster. Or it's the Sandbar Bowie by Fight and Rooster from the Sterling F. Buster Cutler Company. <laughs> And again, I'll have links to his Instagram and Facebook, as well as uh, Arizona Knife Company, if you're interested in picking this up. And uh, stay tuned, because I'm going to be working on a uh, testing video this weekend, where we're going to be doing some cutting and chopping with this bad boy. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Super excited about this, and a big thank you to Sterling F. Buster for sending this out to me. Uh, full disclosure, he did send this to me, but I am giving you my honest opinion about this. Uh, if I would have opened this box and not liked it, I would have told you, because um, of uh, if I ain't honest with you, we ain't going to watch, right? So uh, there it is, guys. This thing's pretty slick. Um, I'm excited to put this to use. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe. Stay sharp. We'll see you next time.